All right, in this short video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how the cut of a gemstone can affect the brilliance of the stone itself. Uh, and I'll be going into a little more depth here in that momentarily, but in summary, I'm going to be covering um, how the depth of a cut uh, can affect things and why this is important for how a gemstone gets set. A well-cut stone will allow the light to pass into the gemstone off of the surfaces and back through the top of the stone. This will create a bright stone. A deeply cut stone oftentimes will project the light through the stone and not all of the light will return to your eye. This can make the stone too dark. With a shallow cut stone, the light can pass directly through the stone onto the surface below and back to the eye. This is also called windowing. Here's a good example of a gemstone exhibiting a window. In this piece of quartz, we can clearly see through the stone to the text below. Here's another piece of lemon quartz. This one is slightly better, although you can still see a little bit of black coming up through the stone. And this cubic zirconia here is a great example of there being no window. As I move it across the text, you don't see any change in the color or brightness in the stone. Okay, so why does this matter? Uh, well, I'll tell you. As a jeweler, one of the questions I get asked quite often is, will setting my gemstone in a bezel or flush into a ring or without any type of light coming in from below or the sides affect the brilliance of the stone? Uh, and that's a great question to ask, and the short answer is yes, sometimes. Uh, I'm going to bring up these stones here. These are the two stones that we were looking at earlier. So we have a cubic zirconia here, and a piece of lemon quartz here. And because of the way the CZ is cut, you can see that no brilliance at all is lost, even though these are pushed down into a black cotton background, and the, there's no, re no light whatsoever going to be reflecting off of the background. So these stones are pretty much completely encased. Uh, the lemon quartz does suffer a little bit. You'll see here that the center of the stone is dark. and So we would call that a, a window. Uh, as you saw earlier, it's a slight window. You can't quite read through it, but it does allow the background to have a major effect on the color of the stone. So uh, a stone like this would not suffer at all from being set in a bezel. Something like this might a little bit. So that's one reason why it's important to uh, match the stone to the setting. Uh, if it is a stone that is a little bit shallow and cut, or if it has a window in it, then you're going to want to either put something behind it that's attractive if it's windowed, uh, or reflect light back up, or if it's simply shallow and uh, needs additional light to come in through the sides, uh, then you're going to want to allow for that in the setting. Uh, if it's a well-cut stone, it won't matter if there's a hole behind or on the sides of the stone, uh, it's still going to have just as much brilliance as before. Uh, and the last little thing just to point out is that if, they're, if we're talking about a ring and it's going on your finger, uh, putting a hole under the stone is generally not done for light because when it's on your finger, no light's going to be coming through that, that hole. Uh, that hole is there for jewelers to clean the back of the stone. Uh, and oftentimes is there as a result of the manufacturing uh, processes of making the ring. Uh, making a bezel is made from tubes, so naturally there's a hole there. Uh, generally we call it a clean-out hole. It allows us to hit the back of the stone with a steam cleaner, get dirt and grime out of that back area. I uh, hope you found this useful. Uh, if you had any questions about this, just leave me a comment or shoot me an email on my website. I'll post the link at the end of the video. Thank you.